Good evening, CLC. If we can stand tonight. We're back. Woo! If you're joining us online, so wonderful to have you joining us this evening again for a wonderful worship service. We hope you participate as you're joining us online. We're going to worship the Lord in this sanctuary. We're going to worship the Lord wherever you are tonight. We're going to invite his presence to be felt right now in this sanctuary. We're going to invite his presence to be felt in the gymnasium where Acts 29 is. We're going to invite his presence to be felt in Lifeline today in the student center. The Holy Ghost is going to be poured out in this sanctuary and throughout this campus. Jesus, uh, we go before you right now. We ask that your spirit be felt right now in this room. Let your spirit be felt upon Acts 29 and upon Lifeline and upon every individual that's watching this service live right now in their home or wherever they are. Lord, we ask right now that your Holy Ghost be poured out right now. Lord Jesus, we know and recognize that you are our one and only true living God. And tonight we exalt your name for it is a of every name, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We exalt you, God. Jesus, you are our hope, our refuge, and our strength. Jesus, when all things seem impossible, you are the God of the impossible. And today we exalt you, Lord. Though the enemy may come in like a rushing lion to try us, to steal us and kill us and destroy us. But Jesus, you have given us the power to defeat that enemy, Jesus. The Holy Ghost that is within inside of us. In Jesus' name, we rebuke the enemy. You must flee from this place. Depression must flee from this place and flee from the hearts of those who are serving the Lord. Let it be restored by hope. Let it be restored by rejuvenation and faith in you, Jesus. And today we ask that your spirit and your will be done in this service. That you anoint your word as it goes forth. We know that your word has written and is anointed. And Jesus, we ask that you touch Brother Abrego as he ministers in your word. Prepare our hearts and our minds for what you have in store for us tonight. We exalt you and submit this time to you. All together, let's clap our hands. Let's shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship the Lord in song. You may be seated if you like. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords tonight. For he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Does somebody really believe that? That he is worthy and he is righteous and there is nobody like my God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's give him some praise before we start this song. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you today, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know he invited you all to sit down, but if you want to stand, I do invite you to stand tonight, because we're in church, amen, hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy, Lord our God, oh, glory and honor, glory and honor to our God, for you created, created all things, 
worship you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't we all lift our hands and worship Jesus tonight? For you are worthy, God. There's no one like you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you. Come on, somebody reach out and touch Jesus tonight. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We praise your name. We glorify your name, Jesus. You are worthy.
Let's reach out to that God, almighty God. Great you are, Jesus. We worship and exalt your name right now. Jesus! We're going to go before the Lord in prayer right now for our community, for our city, for the state, for our leaders, for our law enforcement. We want the will of the Lord to be done in our city, in our community. We know the Lord hears our prayers. He's acted upon our prayers. Thank God for Holy Ghost filled Mary. Isn't that wonderful? We know the Lord hears our prayers and acts upon it. We're going to thank him for what he's done, and we're going to go before him, Lord, right now. Jesus, we ask that your will be done right here in Stockton, California, as it is in heaven. Jesus, we know that we are coming to the end, and we ask right now that you'll pour out your spirit upon all days, upon all flesh right now as we come to these last and final days. Lord, we ask that your spirit be poured out upon all flesh. Lord, that your spirit be poured out right here in this room. Let your spirit be poured out upon this campus, and let your spirit be poured out upon every individual watching right now. Jesus, give us the boldness, the boldness to be witnesses for you. Lord, we ask right now that you'll touch our neighbors, our friends, our family, our co-workers, those we come in contact with. Help us to, Jesus, share your love, share your mercy, share your grace. Lord, we ask that you'll touch our elected officials, that your spirit reign upon them. Jesus, lead them and guide them, Lord. If they are to be in these positions, we ask you to put them there. If they are to be removed, we ask them to be removed by your will, not ours. By your will, not ours. We submit it to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you protect our law enforcement. Let your spirit be upon the Stockton PD. Let your spirit be upon San Joaquin County Sheriff. Let your spirit be upon this valley right now. Let your spirit reign, Jesus, upon them. Protect them, Lord, as they do their job as your called servants, Jesus. And we ask right now, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the what you've done in our midst. We ask that your healing, miraculous power be upon every individual this sanctuary right now. In Jesus' name, we give you glory and honor. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now we're going to go before the Lord for our needs today. And if you're watching online and you have a need, please call the prayer hotline. And if, or you can simply, a lot of people will just like to chat in the little thing. And brothers and sisters that are watching online will pray with them. We invite you to do that. If you have a need right now in this sanctuary, just simply raise your hand and say, Jesus, I've got a situation. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in it, but I know and I trust you. And families pray with families in the sanctuary tonight. Families pray with families. Otherwise, simply look around the sanctuary and see those hands that are raised. Call their name out if you know their name. And if you don't know their name, just simply put your hands toward them in the sanctuary. We're going to pray right now for every need. Jesus, we ask that you'll touch every individual in this sanctuary. Jesus, you know every single need, that every single hand that's raised right now. By your stripes, we are healed. You are a provider, our refuge, and our strength. Jesus, every need represented online right now. We ask that you'll touch every situation for that individual right now that seems like there's no hope. Jesus, remind them that you are the hope, that you are there, Jesus. You have not left nor forsaken them. Jesus, we thank you for hearing our prayers right now. And we thank you, Lord, for intervening on our behalf. We celebrate right now, even though it may not have happened in this second, but we believe it will. We put our faith in you, knowing, Jesus, that you heard our prayer and that you spoke it. We speak it right now in faith. We speak it right now in faith. We speak it and believe it in faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated this evening. Isn't it wonderful to be right here at home? Isn't it wonderful? The Lord is good to us. And this week we're going to be celebrating two individuals who are in their ultimate home. And uh, Carolyn McCain Holman, uh, 
and she went on to be with the Lord, and her service will be right here in this sanctuary on Monday, the 16th at 11 o'clock right here, and so we invite you to come and celebrate her life with the family. And of course, Brother Tim Ramirez, longtime member and drummer and musician at this church. He went on to be with the Lord, such a great witness of the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going to celebrate his life on Friday, this coming Friday the 20th, in this sanctuary again at 1030. We invite you to come and be a part of that service. And if their, their families come to your mind throughout the week, just send them a text. Tell them we love you. Encourage them. Ask the Lord's strength and the peace to be with them. Let's do that right now. We, we know that it, there's been a lot of loss in the last couple of weeks, couple of months here at CLC. A lot of long-term members, Pastor Andy mentioned this on Sunday, a lot of long-term members of our church. But we know that they're in, a, they're in a much better place than right here, right now. This is great, but <laughs> they're feeling they're in the presence of the Lord. And that's one day we're going to see him again. We're going to see him again. We're going to go up to him, give him a big hug. You made it before, before I did. But I, I made it with you. We're going to celebrate the Lord. So just let's just simply stand again across the sanctuary and ask the Lord's comfort. You may be closer to one family or another and maybe one that I haven't mentioned here, but you're close to them and you want to pray with them. Speak their name out right now. Jesus, we ask that your comfort and your strength be upon every family in this church who's recently lost a loved one, Jesus. We know and celebrate, Lord, that they're with you and they're in your presence. But, Jesus, our hearts are broken because they were gone just too soon from our lives and too soon from this ministry. And Jesus, let your spirit and your comfort come upon us as a body, Jesus of Christ. Come upon every family, Jesus, that you touch them. The McCann family, Jesus, that you touch the Murphy family, Jesus, that you touch the Ramirez family, Jesus, that your strength and your peace will be upon them, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the ultimate hope that we have in you. We thank you, Jesus, that one day we'll all be together once again, celebrating Jesus, you. We worship and honor you, God, for the ultimate hope that we have in eternity. Thank you, Jesus, for this time that we're able to spend with them on this earth. Jesus, we give you all glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is now time for our Wednesday evening tithe and offering. Woo! Thank you for your continued support, and thank you for your continued faithfulness to the kingdom of the Lord. Jesus, we go before you right now with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving in our heart. You have so richly blessed us as a people. And tonight we give back unto you, not even just, Jesus, we know, Lord God, that what we have is not ours, but we give it back unto you because we know, Lord Jesus, you've entrusted us with it. And we give it with cheerful hearts today. Jesus, we ask that your blessings be upon every individual tonight, those that give online right now and those that give in person. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you as you give tonight.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God today. Amen. I do feel his spirit. And right now, uh, this is a, a special day. It's our first day that we have uh, our Wednesday night family night. Amen. Where our youth, amen, they're worshiping in the SEA gym. And at this time, our young adults are also worshiping right now, hearing the word of God in our uh, student center. If there are any young adults here, you're welcome to go and join the young adults today or the youth. But they're having a good time in the Holy Ghost. I actually started there. Uh, I started there. I couldn't, I couldn't help but start in Lifeline, our Lifeline service before coming out here. And man, it was moving in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I know God is doing a tremendous thing. And I know he's going to do a tremendous thing here today. This is also, I believe, one of the first times we've live streamed actually here at our West Lane facility. And I'm so grateful that uh, there are individuals who have tuned in uh, to this service tonight to be blessed by the Spirit of God and the move of God today. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can remain seated. Why don't you just open them up to, with me. And uh, I want to talk today about being the light of the world today. Let's open up our Bible to John 3.16. We're going to read a few verses there, then jump to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And I, I felt the Lord really place this message in my heart a few weeks ago, actually. I wrote it in my journal, and I've just been mulling on it, marinating on it. The word has been sitting in my spirit for a little while. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about what the Lord has been telling me and what the Lord has been ministering to me. And I pray from the overflow of God's ministry in my life, you would be blessed just a little bit and be increased today by the living word of God. Amen. Is anybody willing to receive the word of God today? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I am. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the, that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And I want you to pay attention in the following verses. It says, and this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. And does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds might be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Let's just pray that God would have his way today. Father, we come before your presence, Lord Jesus, tonight, Lord Father. We come with an open heart and an open mind, God, to receive your word, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would be in this place, enabling us to understand, to receive, and to be transformed by your word. Your word is the light today, Father. Let it shine upon us, God, and let us be willing to take it in us, God. Let us be transformed by it today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give you all the glory for it. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Here in this verse of scripture, I'm starting off with John 3.16, especially because it has a very powerful statement in verses 19 through 21. It says that the condemnation that the world has received is because the light that has been shown by God, it has come into the world. But men of the world loved darkness more than they loved light. Because their deeds were evil and they would rather be in the dark performing their deeds than be exposed by the light of the truth of the gospel 
of Jesus Christ. So they hid themselves. And in verse 21, the, the word of God, and this is actually Jesus Christ speaking. He speaks of, um, of the characteristics of those who have truth and know truth and want to walk in truth. And those people who are truly hungry for truth, they do not hide from the light, but they allow themselves to be pos positioned under the light. That the light of the word of God and the light of truth would shine clearly into their lives so that they can be transformed. That is the will of God for man. That man not hide themselves from the truth that is found in the word of God. But with an open life and an open heart, we say, God, here I am. And I don't know about you, but that's how it happened with me. It happened in my life. When I came to God, when I found God, I didn't come as a pretty specimen of a human being. I came with all kinds of problems and all kinds of mindsets and all kinds of dark imaginations in my heart and in my mind. And I would rather live in the dark. But there came a day when I heard the word of God and I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And instead of hiding, I said, here I am, Lord. You can do with me whatever you want. You can throw me away. You can keep me. You can do. And you know what he did? He took me and he baptized me in his spirit and he filled me with the Holy Ghost, uh, and he gave me new life. Is that anybody's testimony here tonight? That's what God did. He took us in all of our ugliness. He took, of, he took us in all of our corruption, and he was willing to transform us. That is the, the ironic thing or the, the interesting thing about the truth, is that the truth makes us feel very, makes us feel very vulnerable. But at the same time, it's that vulnerability that's required for us to be transformed. We must be willing. But what I want to focus on today is this other aspect of the light, this other aspect of it. And for this, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 5. Now, Matthew chapter 5, something really interesting uh, occurs in certain uh, scriptures in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 it says now you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house wow so now the word of God, Jesus Christ is actually saying, look, it's not me. I'm not the only one that is the light in the world. But when you have come to me, when you receive the gospel and you are transformed by God, something happens in your life where you are now transformed into being the light that shines in the world. And God values our lives to that extent where it, he says uh, that a lampstand, it's not meant to be hidden, but it's placed like a city that lights up on a hill. You know what that's referring to? It's actually referring to Jerusalem. I remember going to Israel. I had the privilege of going to Israel one time and being actually on the side of Jordan, the actual country of Jordan, up on a mountain looking out into Israel. If it were nighttime, you would actually be able to see Jerusalem. It was literally a city that was set up on on a hill, and you can see it from very far away, sitting up on a hill. Jerusalem was literally the light of the nations that surrounded because it was high up and set on the mountain. And a city that has light is not meant to be hidden, but it's meant to shine into the world. And it's real, it's it's designed to light up the world where there was darkness. The light is designed to give clarity and so the children of God are that what does that mean about us then that our lives they're supposed to be lives that shine the gospel and they shine out into the world that's what we should be but now if we go back 
and we examine how the world reacts to the light, then we see a clarification of how the world just might begin to act towards us when we are really becoming what God has called us to be. What does the word of God say about Jesus? That he was the light and he shone, he came into this world. And when he came to this world, he was willing to save and say, come, come to the light. But the men who lived in this world, this world rejected him because they did not want the light. Because they knew wherever the light shone that their actions were going to be revealed. And so it is with the children of God. When you are the light, your life exposes. Your life opens up. And the same things that happen with the light as it was shown from Jesus is the same thing that happens when we are the light. You see, this is, this is what Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 talks about here. And I'm going to go there real quick to read this. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. The word of God says, for you were once in darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Wow. And says here, walk as children of light. Now, when it says walk as children of light, it's not saying literally walk step by step as light. It means in your lifestyle, in what you do, how you go to work, how you live at your work. How you live when you're, when you're practicing your hobbies. How you live when you're at home. How you live one hour after you leave Sunday morning service. Be the light. Walk as children. Children that have been born into the light. Because if you've come to the Lord, those of us who once walked in darkness, we are now light in the Lord. In verse 9, it says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Wow. It says, don't live your life in the unfruitfulness of sin, being obedient to the things, to the sin of this world, but... Be obedient to goodness and righteousness and truth. Wow. And it says here, we're not supposed to walk with it, but rather expose them. We expose those things that are not righteous. And it's not that we expose it with our mouth. It's that our lives itself is a shining beacon of light that naturally exposes the actions of others. And I'm going to go more into that because that's really important for a child of God to realize. It says here in verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Who is the light again? We are. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake. You who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Wow, that's incredible. It's saying that we are the light. And as we live life, we expose. I remember when I first started coming to God, I started getting really zealous for the things of God and making some major changes in my life. Uh, one of those years was my last few years of high school and I was a young man who was inconsistent in my walk with God but I remembered that um, I, I, I said it this way I had to squash my old life to squash it and there was a season in my life where I became very radical and very very intense and I decided in my heart and my mind that if I wanted to live for God I had to put myself in a position of no return. 
So when I went to high school and I started going to my classes, I let everybody know I'm an apostolic now. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm a Christian. And I don't do the things that you do. And I wouldn't just go around just saying that to their faces, you know, of course. They w I would get invited to things. And uh, uh, individuals would want, to, uh, want me to join them to do certain things. And, but the thing is, is that if I wanted to live righteous, I needed to take a stand. And I began to say, no, I can't. I can't do that. I can't go there. You know, and they said, I noticed that you don't cuss. Why don't you cuss? Well, I'm a Christian. I don't cuss. I don't speak those foul things. That kind of stuff. I've gotten it out of my, out of my mouth. I got it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which edify it. Hallelujah. That's what the word of God says. And I began to spread and talk about it. And you know what's interesting about my friends at school? They began to not treat me as a friend. They began to treat me as a priest. It's, I, I, I'm being honest. And they would tell me, so you go to church every Sunday? I said, yeah, every Sunday. And Wednesday. Yeah, and Wednesday. What are you training to be a priest or something? <laughs> Has anyone ever been asked that? Like, are you, are you like, are you in some type of, because the community that I lived in was predominantly Catholics. It was 80, 90% Hispanic, at least at that time. It was Watsonville, California. If anybody's ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. Lots of Hispanics. Uh, and, 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 and they, oh, are you training to be a priest or something? What are you, you know, no, I just love God. I just I just love everything about God. And I would begin to talk to them about God and say, you know what? This is what God means to me. And I have felt his spirit. You know, they would, they would end up, their jaws would hit the ground because they never met anybody who had an actual relationship with God. Neither did they know that you could have a relationship with God. And those of you who didn't grow up in the church, you know what I'm talking about. You didn't even know it was possible. Wait, you can talk to him? Wait, he talks back to you? Is it like an actual voice? Like, what, what is, how does it work? No, it's something you feel in your heart. And as you came to the house of God, you began to experience it. Yeah. Wow, I do feel it. I feel something. And you know what? My mind is saying, this is crazy. But my spirit, it's drawing me to the altars. Anyone know what I'm talking about? My mind is like, what are these people? But you know what? I need to come to, I need to taste this for myself. And then one time God gets a hold of you and shows you what it's all about. And and fills you with his power. And fills you with his love. Hallelujah. And so the light would shine. And it would get to the point where they would begin to uh, not do certain things that they would do in front of me. Uh, do in behind closed doors. They wouldn't do them in front of me. And if someone even slipped with a cuss word. Right. They even said a bad word. They was, oh, no, don't say that. Yeah, Brother Josh, he's a Christian. He's a Christian. Don't say that. Right? Don't, oh, don't do that. Don't play with him like that. No, he doesn't play like that. They would actually talk about me that way. Say, no, don't, he doesn't do that anymore. He's, he's, a, he's a child of God. He's a Christian, you know. And, you know, you could either take that offensively or you can take that and say, hey, man, I'm a child of God. Come on over. Can taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. They began to defend me. You know why? Because they were being exposed. They didn't like that their lifestyle, my lifestyle, I didn't even have to tell them that's wrong. They already knew it was wrong. They didn't want to do it in front of me because it was wrong. And at that point in time, they had to make a decision. Am I going to keep um, pursuing my curiosity and finding out who the God of this young man is or am I going to keep doing my works in secret and just not cuss in front of Abrego, not cuss in front of Josh let's not, let's not do this in front of Josh yeah because he's a Christian, no you got to respect him because he's a child of God and he lives like, you know, he, he's, he's studying to be a priest and, and you know you can't do it in front of him, you see their actions were driving them to the darkness and I was inviting them to the light and I would say Look, you don't have to hide. You can open up and God will take you as you are. God will take you with Ed just as you are. And you know what? He'll take you as you are because he can change you to be something better. And he can change you to be something greater. Hallelujah. 
And then there were others who did not take that approach and did not treat me so kindly. And for that, there is scripture as well. I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Some of you recognize that, that, uh, that word. It's become a lot more popular recently. A diffuser, right? And what does a diffuser do, right? You put your essential oils in a diffuser and it starts releasing some. How many know what I'm talking about? It's helped me go to sleep before. I'm going to be honest. You know, my wife, my lovely wife has, has bought. And it releases in essence. It, it releases something into the atmosphere. And you know what that is, is that those particles are actually so fine. It's a mist. It actually stays in the air for a while because the fragrance is inside of the very mist. It's in the water droplets that are carried by the wind. And that's why you can smell the good fragrance. So the word of God is actually saying that God invented the diffuser. I'm, I'm just kidding. No, he didn't say that. No, he didn't. He didn't. No. But he does say that your life is diffusing an aroma. Your life is giving out in essence. And when people get around you, they smell the fragrance. What is this fragrance? Of his knowledge in every place. <laughs> Wherever you go, you're diffusing the essence of the knowledge of God. Wherever you walk, it doesn't matter where. You can be walking into Walmart to buy some random thing. As you are walking, you're in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in you. You are the church of the living God. You are diffusing the essence of the knowledge of God. Without you even realizing it, the power of God is with you. But that power, that knowledge of God, it gets interpreted by the world in two distinct ways. And we'll find it right here in this passage of Scripture. It says that we are the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, we are the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. Wow. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God. But as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Wow. So we're diffusing aroma, all right. We're diffusing it in essence. And it is the essence of the knowledge of God. But as that knowledge of God is shared with the world, the world has one of two reactions. And this applies, it says, e even to the saint and to the sinner. That e either one smells and what they receive in their mind is death unto death. Or to another, they smell it and they receive it. And they say, there is life unto life here. And if you've lived for God any amount of time, you know this is true. Because you have likely walked into situations where individuals, they have come up to you and they say, who are you? And why do you talk this way? There's something different about you. Oh, you, you, you serve God and you know God and you have a relationship with God. Tell me about this God. Tell me about who you are. You're, there, there's happiness on you. There's joy on you. You're constantly joyful. Oh, you got problems? I didn't know you have problems, right? That's a surprise for a lot of people. I didn't know I got problems, but you know I have the joy of the Lord. And that joy of the Lord is my strength. But to others, 
when they find out and they begin to interact with you, they reject who you are. They reject your identity because you, they know that you won't join them in what they're doing. And you won't speak the way that they're speaking. And you won't participate in their conversations. And you won't say yes to what everybody is saying yes, yes, yes to. And you won't say right to things that they're saying right, right, right to. Because there comes a, a point in time where we are not... Not, we don't live our life according to the rhythm of this world. And tr truth be told, that this world, it is proceeding in a rhythm that an apostolic cannot join. Wow. They're saying things about God that we cannot join. They're saying things about humanity and community that we cannot join. They're saying things about us gathering together to worship God that we can't say yes to. We can only say yes to the word of God and the knowledge of God. And they don't like it. And they don't want to hear it. They say, oh, you're one of those that are still gathering. Yes, we're gathering, and we're worshiping the name of Jesus together. You know what they smell? They smell death. And instead of seeing life in us, the fact that there are people who every Sunday, they're coming to the altar, drug addicts, they're getting changed and transformed. Individuals who are broken in their hearts, they were fragmented in their minds, they're being put back together. See, they don't see that. And they don't say, oh, something good is happening there. Oh, look, that person, he's not, they're not doing what they used to do. They're not living in the, in the streets no more. They're not doing, they're not saying that. They're saying there's death there. But if they should come to the house of God, they would see life all over our altars. And the life that's being poured out every single service. We see the baptismal tank filled and people going down in the name of Jesus. There is an aroma of life. An aroma of life, but also to those who perish in aroma of death. But they say, I don't want that. So don't be surprised, child of God, when the world rejects you. Don't be surprised when the world pushes you away. Because many times what they are experiencing is their desire to live in the darkness. To live hidden and away from the light of the gospel. It's our job just to keep shining. It's our job just to keep believing. It's our job to keep sharing. I don't care if they tell me I'm not supposed to share the gospel here. I'm going to tell you, hey, listen, there's a God who can heal you. There's a God who can restore you. Let me tell you about Jesus. How about I take you out to lunch and let me tell you about Jesus. Am I talking to anybody? We got to shed the light. We got to spread it out. We have to diffuse the aroma of the spirit in all places, wherever we go. You see, this attitude, this position, this way of looking at life, we have to get used to it as children of God. If we are going to win this city. If we are going to be, if CLC is going to be what CLC needs to be to get this city into these doors and save souls, we got to get used to it. We have to get used to not being popular. Because amongst those ten people who are rejecting you, just maybe there's one. Just maybe, just maybe there is one that says, I am hungry. I want to know more. I want to feel what you are feeling. I want to smile like you are smiling. I want to have peace like you have peace. You might just find that one. Wow. But it's hard. It's hard for the world to interact with us because they see the stark differences. You know, there are whole systems in this world that are built on corrupt ways of being. There are whole economic systems and business systems that are built on 
the morality of, of biting people's backs, uh, stabbing people in the back and crawling on top of whoever you need to crawl on top of so that you can get on top and lie and steal and cheat as long as they don't, they, they don't catch you and do whatever you've got to do to get as much money as you can get. And in the middle there is a child of God working in the same place saying, I don't do that kind of stuff. And guess what? I don't need to do that kind of stuff to be successful because God is my provider. And God is the one who opens doors for me. Yes, that's right. You see, people, they don't like that. They're uncomfortable when you begin to act like that and say things like that. Oh, you think you're good at two-shoes. And you know why they don't like it? It's because it, the, word, the Word of God in James, it describes the Word of God like a mirror. They're actually seeing themselves, and they don't like what they see. They don't like the ugly truth about their past. They don't like all the things that they have done. They don't like all the people that they've betrayed. They don't like all the actions that they've performed. But I recognize in the word of God that if anyone be in Christ he is a new creation behold all things have passed away old things have passed away and all things are made new so though they see themselves and though the word of God does show us the ugly truth of who you are, God never leaves us there. But the word of God says that we behold the glory of the Lord. And it is that same glory of the Lord that transforms us into that glory. The same light of God, the light that exposes you, the light that makes you feel vulnerable, that light that makes you feel like, man, I've done so much. That's the very thing that transforms you and changes everything about you if you just let it complete its work in you. You see, too many people walk away from God before God can get a chance to get a hold of them and say, look, if you're going to be healed I got it. I have to diagnose the sickness. If you want me to treat you, I need you to know what is wrong. You can't treat something that you have no knowledge of. But he is the great physician, and he sees what's wrong with every individual. He sees your past, and he sees your mistakes, and he's not intimidated by them. He says, look, I'm the great physician. I can take you as you are, and I can heal you. I can transform you. I can change you. Does anyone know what I'm talking about tonight? I can change everything about your heart and your mind. And guess what? Your mistakes, yeah, those mistakes, I'm putting them under my blood. And I'm putting them as far into the sea. So far I won't remember them and I will never bring them to your charge again. That's the God that we serve. He's not a God that looks away from sin. He's not a God that ignores sin. He's not a God that says, let's just act like that's not there. No, he's a God that says, look, I see it's there, and you know what? I'm not intimidated by it. I'm going to transform what is there, and I'm going to make you a new creation. <laughs> that's a powerful God. That's a wonderful God. I said, that's a wonderful God. You see, so many of us, we already tried to hide our past ourselves. We already tried that way. We already tried digging it back into sports and putting it back into entertainment. Try to bury what painful things have occurred in our past. And it just wasn't good enough because it kept breaking through and destroying our lives. But the moment God got a hold of it, everything changed and everything was transformed. We serve a wonderful God. We serve a wonderful God. And that's what we have to realize today. And that's the power of the light. And you see, that's important. Not only that the light exposes, but also the light redeems and transforms. That means this for us. When people smell the aroma that's coming from our lives they shouldn't only think condemnation they should also think love and redemption 
if the message that's coming off of you is a harsh God that doesn't forgive, you might be living wrong. But if the message that comes from you is, yes, God sees all of our mess, but God also transforms and he changes and he renews and he brings life, then you're being the light that you need to be. Because the life, the power that is in Jesus Christ is not only in his death, that was given so that our sins could be forgiven. But it was also in his resurrection. The death and the resurrection. The death and the life. The light that exposes, but also the power that transforms. That is who we are. In us is found both exposure to the world, but also Hope to the world that in God you can find what you need. In God you can be changed and transformed. Three things that I would invite you to remember today. That I believe are the most important to the message that I'm preaching tonight. One, don't be surprised when the world rejects you. Because the word of God already anticipated this. Don't be surprised. It's individuals many times who they don't want the light. They want to live in the darkness. But also, too, I want you to remember this. That though there may be many that reject you, there are some which your life is going to give tremendous hope. There are some that you're going to reach and you're going to be hope to them. Because so many people, especially your family, your friends, they know who you used to be. And when they see the product of what God has done in your life, they will see something truly genuine has happened in you. There are so many who when they see your life and they see your joy, they see your morality. They see that you're unchanging. You're a child of God. You're walking righteously. That they're going to be curious. They're going to be attracted. They're going to follow. They're going to say, what is the God that you serve? Who is the God that you serve? Tell me more about him. Yes. And three, and most important of all, as a child of light, you have the most important responsibility of also letting the light shine on you. That is indispensable. Not just that we are the light, that we are the essence of the knowledge of God to the world, but also we have a responsibility of allowing that very light that shines on the world, that the world rejects, we can run the risk of hiding the way that the world hides and not letting the light of the word of God shine upon us. We have to treat the light with reverence. What is the light? The light is the word of God. The light is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we ourselves are not willing to be opened up by God day by day, if we ourselves are not, we don't allow God to point and say, look, this is what I need to change. And this is what I need to shift. And this is what I need to transform. And if we yet hide from the words that are being preached from these pulpits, service after service, and the word that we read, we run from them. We say, God. I'm not ready for that, not today. You're hiding from the light. You're hiding from what God wants to do in you. You're hiding. The will of God is for us not to hide, but to be exposed. And with an open heart, we say, God, Lord, here I am. Here I am. In all that I am, here I am. And guess what? I'm not perfect, God, but here I am. 
I want to be the light. And because I want to be the light, I'm willing to let your light shine on me first and change me first and transform my mind first, transform my heart first, transform my spirit first. If we do these things, we will be a tremendous force in this city. We will be a tremendous beacon of light that this world desperately needs. A world that's not afraid, a, a church that's not afraid to be what God has called us to be. And also a church that's not afraid to look inward and say, you know what? We don't have everything right, but we're letting God have his way. We're letting God transform. I'm letting him still move on me. I don't talk perfectly. Sometimes I say things that I regret, but guess what? The light of the word of God, I let, I'm going to let it shine upon me so that I can be changed so that I can be transformed. I don't know if this message is a message you were expecting from me, but it's what the Lord placed in my heart tonight. I've said everything that the Lord has placed in my heart to say, and I dare not go any further. My only invitation for you today is to be the light and to let the light shine upon you tonight can we stand to our feet and if the if the praise team can come perhaps just one individual that's fine the constant position of a child of God should always be here I am here I am in all that I am here I am in all my imperfections but God I'm willing to be changed by you and as you are changed as you are transformed you will become a brighter light, a more powerful light, a more powerful beacon of hope to your world. You will become a powerful beacon of hope to your family. You will become a powerful beacon of hope in your workplace. You will be what God has designed you to be. But first, we have to let the light shine upon us on an individual level. Are we hiding anything from God? Is there an area of our home that we intentionally, we keep the lights off so nobody could see? Is there a part of your heart that you've kept the lights off because you're not quite ready for God to search that yet? Transform that yet? Let's turn the lights on tonight. Let's let God transform us tonight. And can I tell you, it's going to feel vulnerable. See, that's the death that's working in us. But if we let God have his way from vulnerability, it will turn into transformation and joy and a testimony. That's what it will turn into. And that's the power of the resurrection. That's the power of Jesus who was once dead, but on the third day he rose again. And though there may be areas in our life that seem dead, God wants to resurrect them today. And instead of it being an area of shame, he's going to give you a testimony. And he's going to say, look what powerful things and wonderful things I've worked in your life. Is anybody willing to do that tonight? Can we just pray tonight in the Holy Ghost? Lord, Father. Ah, your word is powerful, Lord Jesus, tonight. Oh, your word is a living word, God. It searches, Lord Jesus. It searches the intents of the heart, Lord God. It, defi it, it divides asunder, God. And you've divided in our soul, Lord God, today, Father. We want to be, Lord, Father, what you have designed us to be. We want to walk how you called us to walk, God. And for that, God, we're willing to be transformed today, God, as a people. Shine your light in this place today. Shine your light in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. If you feel in the Holy Ghost to come up here to this altar... Pray together. Let just God have his way. You are welcome to come up to these altars tonight. But I invite you to pray. Just let God have his way in you. Because you're called to be a tremendous light in this world today.
You are called to be a diffusion of the essence of the knowledge of God in our world today. Somebody's got to decide to be the light tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody has to decide because I am going to be the light. And I'm going to let the light shine upon me. I'm going to let God transform me. I feel him today. I feel him today. Just let him have his way. That's it. Somebody in the Holy Ghost, just lift your hand. Say, God, I'm willing, Father. Complete surrender to the Word of God tonight. Complete submission to the Word of God tonight. A complete willingness to be opened up. same again. 